Maybe you've never heard of vaginismus before. Maybe you never learned about it in sex ed in school, but suddenly in your adult years, the word is just cropping up everywhere. Maybe you have it, maybe your partner has it. Maybe you did learn about it in sex ed. I didn't know vaginismus existed until I was in my twenties and a couple of friends of mine opened up to me about their experiences with it. Before then, I honestly had no idea. And I was listening to them like, wait, your vagina does what? and it has a name, so let's get into it. But before we do, hello, my name is Hannah. I make videos about sex and relationships, and if you wanna see more of that kind of content, then please do subscribe if you'd like to. We're gonna be saying a lot of vag words in this video. Vaginismus, vagina, vaginal, and you're just gonna have to get used to it. What is vaginismus? Vaginismus is the involuntary contraction of vaginal muscles making penetration difficult, painful, or impossible. It might be something you've always experienced or you may have previously been able to enjoy painless penetrative vaginal sex. These are some common symptoms of vaginismus. Difficult or impossible vaginal penetration, a stinging or burning pain during sex, difficulty inserting things like tampons or menstrual cups, and difficulty having a pelvic exam with a speculum like a cervical screening, and we will get onto that later. Vaginismus can take many different forms. Maybe you can't insert artificial objects like tampons and speculums and dildos, but you are able to insert body parts like fingers and penises. Maybe you can have penetration when you're having solo sex, but you can't when having partnered sex, or maybe you just can't insert anything at all under any circumstance. A really important thing to note is that the contractions are involuntary and they can happen even if you are super, super aroused and been enjoying other kinds of external sexual activity. But then when it comes to vaginal penetration, your vagina is just like, no. It can lead to people feeling broken or that their vagina doesn't work or that they're doing something wrong. It's not just a physically painful condition, but it can be really emotionally frustrating and upsetting. But it is very common. Around 27,000 people in the UK have vaginismus and that number may be more because people feel ashamed to go to their doctor about it. If you have vaginismus, you are not broken. It is not your fault. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of and it can be treated. There are other things that can cause pain during vaginal penetration, such as, but not limited to, STIs, thrush, endometriosis. I am not a medical professional and neither is Google, so please do go to your doctor for a proper diagnosis. What causes vaginismus? I don't know about you, but vaginismus was never spoken about in sex education, but what was given several mentions in the classroom, but then also on the playground, was that if you have a vagina, the first time you have penetrative sex and times after that, it will hurt. This can have lots of implications. Believing that vaginal penetration will hurt, receiving a sex negative education with no emphasis on pleasure can be a cause of vaginismus. If you do find vaginal penetration painful or impossible, and because we were taught it's supposed to hurt, and we weren't taught about vaginismus, you may not realize that you have vaginismus and that you can get help. And then also, even if you don't have vaginismus, you may occasionally experience discomfort during sex. And again, we were taught it's supposed to hurt. Ah! And we weren't taught things about healthy communication, pleasure, we might think that that discomfort is normal and that we have to put up with it and we don't know how to communicate with our partner about that because we've not been given the tools to do that. We also might not feel comfortable asking to use lube, which is amazing and totally normal. Anyway, I'm so mad about the it's gonna hurt education. I'm so mad about it. So mad. Back to vaginismus. There are potential physical and psychological causes of vaginismus. For each individual with vaginismus, it'll be different. It might be one thing or it might be a cocktail of things all interacting with each other. Physical causes might be medical, thrush, endometriosis, certain medications. The list is very long, so do speak to your doctor. Childbirth or miscarriage, menopausal changes, pelvic trauma, such as surgery or examinations, and physical or sexual abuse abuse or rape. Psychological causes could be fear, anxiety, or stress. This could be fear that your vagina is too small, fear of tearing, fear of unintended pregnancy or STIs, performance anxiety, guilt or negative experiences towards sex, or bad sexual experiences. The list is endless. <laughs> there are so many anxieties that we have 
about sex. Issues with your partner, maybe there's abuse, distrust, fear of being vulnerable or a lack of communication, previous sexual or emotional trauma, and childhood. <laughs> Hey, childhood. This could be sex negative or inadequate sex education, a strict religious upbringing that held a lot of negative values around sex, believing sex is shameful or wrong, and just a general shame and silence around sexuality topics. That is a lot of stuff, and sometimes there might not be an explainable cause. And it's not always useful splitting things up into physical causes or psychological causes, because often they can't be separated and one can impact the other. Let's talk about pelvic exams. There are different reasons why you might need a pelvic exam, but a common one is for a cervical screening. In the UK, from the age of 25, if you are someone with a cervix, then every few years you need to get a cervical screening. This is really important to attend because it's one of the best ways to protect yourself from cervical cancer. It's not a test for cancer, it's to help prevent it by checking the cells for HPV. At the ripe old age of 28, I have now had two cervical screenings. A cervical screening is carried out by a medical professional and it involves a speculum being inserted into the vagina and a soft brush being used to take a sample of cells from the cervix. However, if you have vaginismus, a cervical screening or any kind of pelvic exam can be really challenging. So here is Dr. Anita Mitra, aka The Gynae Geek, with some tips. Hannah, thank you so much for inviting me to be on your YouTube channel. I would just like to let you all know that this is a gynecologist approved YouTube channel because I recommend it to my patients all the time. So hello, if any of you are watching. So my job in obstetrics and gynecology involves doing speculum examinations all the time. I'll be completely honest, I don't really like having them done to me. So I completely understand that you guys may also not really enjoy it. And for a lot of people, it is quite frankly traumatic. And so my job is to try and make you feel as comfortable as possible. And I will take this to an extreme because I once sang happy birthday with someone while she had her smear test done. So it's really important that you do let us know. So you can tell us as much or as little about why you don't like it, um, but you really don't have to disclose anything that you don't feel comfortable to. But just if we know, then there are a lot of things that we can do. So first things first, you don't have to have me singing to you. You can bring your own music. So you could bring your phone and put it on the desk. That's absolutely fine. And you can also bring somebody with you who you think will be able to help you feel more comfortable throughout. And also just to let you know, there is normally a member of nursing staff there who is there to help the person who's taking the test, but also um, just to be able to talk to you, hold your hand, whatever you want, it's not a problem. Just let us know. Now, you can also ask for a double appointment because it's important that you don't feel rushed. You're never wasting anyone's time. And even if you don't manage to have the test done and you need to come back another day, if I've helped you feel a little bit more able to have it done again, then that's fine. That's not a waste of time. We've achieved something. But a double appointment can be a way of just meaning that there is a little bit more time and you might feel a little bit more at ease. Now we take the test on a couch and normally what we do is we ask you to lie in this kind of frog-legged position. So you bend your knees and bring your feet as close to your bottom as you can. You keep your feet and your ankles together and then let your knees flop apart. This helps us because it means it brings the cervix forward. So it helps with visualization during the examination, but also it helps you because if your legs are flopped down and, and completely relaxed, which I acknowledge is difficult to do, but the more relaxed your legs are, then it means that the muscles around the vagina, the pelvic floor can also be more relaxed and that helps us to do the examination more quickly and efficiently. Now, the other thing is that no one likes the word speculum. So I'm going to show you one briefly. This is the speculum, okay? Now, this is the bit that goes inside and this is the handle that we use to open it. And this little thing here is a little nut that we use to hold it open. Now, we don't always need to crank it all the way. I'll just generally open it as much as I need to. Now, the insertion is often the bit that people find really, really uncomfortable and really difficult, particularly if you have vaginismus. So some people find that inserting the speculum themselves is helpful and I'm more than happy for you to do this and I can help and guide as well. And you can also ask for us to do it as slowly as you need and we can talk you through the whole experience. 
Now, in terms of lubricant, we're not supposed to put lubricant on the tips if we're doing a smear test, because if you get lube all over the cervix, then that ruins the test, unfortunately. But I, along with many other people, will often put a bit of lube around this part here so that it's not going to smear all over the cervix, but it just means that the insertion is a little bit easier. Now, the thing that we don't use is anesthetic cream. So that's a numbing cream. Um, we don't use it because it just numbs the skin. And so if it's uncomfortable because of the fact that the, the muscles are tight, then that isn't going to be helpful. Now, as I said before, if you need to come back, not a problem. You're not wasting anyone's time. We just really want you to feel comfortable and, and not under pressure. The other thing is that I often discuss with patients about seeking help in terms of talking therapy. So seeing a psychologist or a psychotherapist, somebody who's going to be able to talk through and, and make a bit of progress more for the long term. And now these things can take time, um, but it can be a useful investment in terms of being able to look after your health in the future. So good luck and just speak to us, let us know. There are lots of things that we can do and I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitra. Also, if you yourself are a medical professional, the Vaginismus Network, who are a community of people with vaginismus, created a guide for how to make your patients with vaginismus feel more comfortable during pelvic examinations. And I will link that in the description. How to treat vaginismus. Depending on your cocktail of things that might be causing your vaginismus, treatment will be different for everyone. But before we get into specific treatments, I need you to know that you do not have to have vaginal sex. It's more important to have pleasurable sex and the kind of sex you enjoy rather than the kind of sex that you think you should be having. In our cis heteronormative society, sex has become synonymous with penis in vagina sex, but sex and pleasure is so much more than that. We often feel this pressure to have a penis in vagina sex because it's what counts as real sex, it's going all the way, and we demote every other sexual act to foreplay rather than an equally appealing dish on the sex menu. We love a good sex food analogy. Not everyone is into penis and vagina sex, and not every sexual encounter involves somebody with a penis and somebody with a vagina. Sex is multifaceted, and I just wanna put it out there that you can have an amazing, pleasurable, satisfying sex life without vaginal penetration. Shock. Horror. Just take it from Lily and Olla in season two of Sex Education. But equally, absolutely no shame if vaginal penetration is something that you want. If you previously found it really enjoyable and pleasurable, or if the idea of it is really hot and turns you on, or if you and your partner are trying for a baby and want to be able to have penis in vagina sex, there are some treatments available. The different treatments are all about retraining the body and retraining the mind. So here are some potential treatments. Therapy, talking through any past trauma that you may have, fears, anxieties, shame and guilt around sex, potential body image issues, relationship issues. You might be encouraged or taught to do relaxation techniques such as mindfulness, breathing exercises or sensate focus. Pelvic floor exercises, those kegels, She's doing them now, because she thinks about it, and she's doing them. <laughs> this can help you gain control over those muscles that keep contracting. The NHS has a pelvic floor exercises app, and it can send you notification reminders and guide you through doing your reps. And there are also vaginal trainers. They come in sets like this, so they're all different sizes. This is the baby one and you can start with this and work your way up. I would recommend getting professional advice on the best way to use these. You don't necessarily have to use actual dilators like this. You can use your fingers, like start with one and then maybe move up to two, three, etc. This specific set were gifted to me by Love Honey. However, dilators are available on the NHS, but it can vary from place to place how accessible they are. So if vaginal dilators is something that you want to try and your doctor recommends, definitely ask them about where you can get access to some. Another thing that I will mention is that Shush Women's Store have a donation scheme, so you can effectively pay it forward with somebody on low income because a full set is actually really expensive but through Shush's website, you can donate five pounds, you can donate 10 pounds, 15, like whatever you want to do. 
donate and that will go towards a fund that allows people to access free sets if they can't afford one. So I will link all of the info to that stuff in the description. And also in general, and this is for everybody, not just people with vaginismus, but it's really important to take your time. Being in a relaxed state of mind and mentally present for sexual activity really helps with arousal. And do not force penetration. If it's not going in, even after lots of lube, it's not going in. And forcing it can cause more pain and potential injury. And please never use numbing creams, numbing gels to treat vaginismus. These don't actually relax the muscles that are contracting and you won't be able to feel if penetration is causing injury. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Dr. Anita Mitra for taking part in this video. I will leave a link in the description to her Instagram, The Gynae Geek, which is an amazing resource for all gynae related stuff. There is also a whole section on vaginismus on the Hormone Diaries website where people have submitted their own stories and experiences. I'm still going through submissions and posting them, so I'm sure there'll be more to come, but you can have a read of people's experiences with vaginismus and even share your own. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.